Hey St. Charles High, this is Dean Chapman and Livy Lewis here today in the Crow's Nest to talk about college. But first, what was your favorite memory from high school? My favorite memory is when me and my theater troupe went to nationals for our uh, show, She Kills Monsters, which we were never supposed to go to in the first place, but Missouri uh, State Thespian Society gathered the money for us to be adjudicated and that was just a crazy opportunity. And then we ended up getting top eight in the entire country. Um, and we just kept on asking ourselves, like, why us? Why us out of all people? We didn't get it. It was, we were flying by the seat of their pants. They, it just seemed like a weird coincidence. But as we were rehearsing for the, like, 2,000 people that we were performing uh, to, um, I was stage left in the wings and I saw Livy Potoff, uh, who graduated when I was like a sophomore. Um, she played the main role, Agnes, and it was a part where she like flips a table and like, it's like about D&D. So she like tosses the dice like off of the table cause she's like just super duper angry. And it's like a really powerful climactic moment for the show. And I was just watching her do the scene and it just clicked for me because like the sheer emotion and the level of depth we were able to give this show was, in my opinion, why we totally made it all the way there. It doesn't matter if it had moments where it was entirely unpolished. It was that raw emotion and that passion for theater that totally got us to where we ended up. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That's, that's a really cool memory to have. Where was this at? Like, where did you guys do your um, show at? Lincoln, Nebraska. The oh, University okay, so you traveled. Oh, yeah. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, my favorite memory would probably be, like, just, like, sports in general. I really enjoyed sports and, like, the memories that came with it. That was how I made friends. That was, you know, how I feel like I kind of coped with school in mm -hmm. a way. And, like... That definitely helped me actually come to school. Like, <laughs> I had a really hard time, like, getting up out of bed when I didn't have a sport to play. So, like, it definitely, like, gave me more motivation for school. Um, and then, like, going to state last year for soccer was really awesome. And, like, playing volleyball is my, you know, my pride and joy for the longest time. Mm -hmm. So, I think both of those sports, like, really helped me through high school. Yeah. It's really, I mean, I think that extracurriculars are like, it's what makes or breaks you. For real. And it honestly is a main factor of being in high school. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the times and a lot of the kids, the only reason why they like cope through the day, like you said, was because either there's strict attendance rules or, you know, they literally just want to play. Or they just want to be a part of something. Yeah, and, um, like, if you think about how many students in our school are um, athletes, it's crazy. The amount of people, or, like, even kids that are in clubs and activities and all kinds of different things, like, that happen outside of just, like, daily school days. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely, like, puts a bigger perspective on, like, what we're really trying to do here, like what these kids need, like what these kids want, how it's helping them, how it's yeah. like helping them benefit themselves and want to help themselves. And it's really important to, I mean, um, to show that all clubs need to have an equal opportunity and equal funding, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm not going to get too in-depth on because that's a very touchy subject. But, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get in-depth on that. I got a lot to share. I mean, yeah, for <laughs> real. But, like, the, the point is, is that clubs are super important, whether in high school or even going into mm -hmm. college, which is what we're primarily going to be talking about. But, um, you know everybody should have an equal opportunity. It doesn't matter if you're doing creative writing, sitting in a classroom for an hour and a half. It doesn't matter if you're stucco planning an event. It doesn't matter if you are football, wrestling, girls volleyball, girls swim. It, it all matters and it all matters to different types of students and that should be honored. 
that should be honored whether you're admin staff or a student who doesn't do any clubs which that's valid too if you want to just get in get out that's perfectly fine you're allowed to do well, that or like students work and like that's how they cope through it you know yep. there's so many different things that isn't just school but the one thing i will say about sports and funding and and everything like that is um, it's definitely very unequal, and I think that they should change that. For example, it's not necessarily even the school. It's maybe more of the students. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, my soccer team went to state last year, and nobody cared. Nobody cared. This whole year, we've had a pretty good season. We play good schools. We, you know, whatever. And we've had a student section. If you count 10 kids, then once. Yeah. So... Um, And then you go to like, I'm not trying to hate on anyone either, but you just think of some other sports, AKA like football or baseball Mm -hmm. um, that don't have as good of a winning record. And there's still students going to those games and cheering them on. So it's just like, kind of like, is this like the type of sport that it is? Or is it like sexism? Because I just can't really tell which one. Maybe it's both. Anyway. I, I mean, I still, I feel basically the same. Um, I feel like similar prejudices against theater. Um, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, and like, you're watching a play. You don't understand. We work months and months, yep. like so many hours, like probably up to like 50 to 60, depending on what the show is. Um working on this stuff and you don't have to do a thing you pay like 10 bucks for a ticket seven if you're a student uh and you sit and you watch a story unfold right in front of you and i just i just don't get why uh i mean we're just not taken as seriously by anybody yeah but it is frustrating for sure because you work so hard and you you do so much and you try so hard and um, sometimes it just doesn't pay off the way that you want it to. But at the end of the day, what I was like kept in my mind was it's more for me than anyone else. You oh, know, totally. like that supports that support would be awesome. But if my mom comes to my games or like my friends every once in a while, then that's all that I need. Totally. Um, so what are you doing like during summer or after summer? Mm. Tell me during and then tell me after. Yeah. So during the summer, I'm going to try to get a job, my Mm -hmm. first job. I have been very lucky to not have to work until like right now, Um, but that does come with its downsides. I'm very nervous going into the workforce. And another thing is, is I also don't have my license because I have a major phobia of driving I thought I I thought it was just like a mild thing but no like I I genuinely believe that this is like a full-on phobia um do you do you know how to get over phobias no it's um you have to start interacting with them no you have to that's how you do it (laughs) I know my my therapist tells me you need to go and you need to sit in the driver's seat Uh and you need to just listen to your favorite music and start associating it with positive things and I'm like girl that's not enough because even when I'm in the passenger seat I notice every little crappy thing that other cars do and I literally the majority of my friends have gotten into some car trouble or some car wreck and you expect me to be okay with that yeah like I mean, I understand we live in the suburbs, so at some point it's going to have to happen, but like, I don't know. It's, I don't think anybody can understand the level of depth of the fear that I have when it comes to driving. You cannot just say, just be a defensive driver. Like, what does that even mean? Like, why can't everybody just be a good driver? But yeah, whatever. So I'm hopefully going to be working on that over the summer. Um and a job and buying stuff for college yeah and so then after the summer i'm gonna go to truman state university my major is in interdisciplinary studies which is like a create your own major and Amazing. i yeah and i either want to do humanities or i can be really quirky and i can 
call it archival studies, depending on what classes they have, because I want to do a minor in museum studies, because the whole end game is to get my master's in library science and be a librarian, or if I decide that I don't like that track, I could uh, get a master's in museum studies mm -hmm. and be a museum curator. You got it all together. Yeah. <laughs> That's it took a while. Yeah, that's how I felt. And then now I kind of threw myself in a loop. I'm not so um, confident in my choices lately. You, but the thing is, is that that is so valid because yeah. what I wanted to do freshman year, I wanted to go into theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, those dreams were super mega crushed uh, by some people, including myself. Yeah. Uh, and I decided that I didn't want to be picked on for my body and my personality constantly for the next, uh, like, 40 years and never get a you. job because I'm queer, because I'm plus size, because I'm this. And I was like, I'm just, I mean, when Broadway decides and Hollywood decides that they want to be inclusive, yeah, and not I'll call. come back in or, like, you know how, like, in Pitch Perfect, it's, like, Fat Amy? Yeah. And it's, I hate that or word. what? And it's, like, she's, like, why do you have to call her that? Like, why do you have to, know. you know? And it's, I I can't with that kind of stuff either. I don't like that word. And, like, well, it's not like I'm going to be, like, oh, you're you're not oversized to someone that's yeah oversized. It's a, but it's also, like, I'm not going to go out of my way and be, like, yeah. you're fat. I mean. I hate that word. I mean, fat is not a bad word. You know, because, like, I am, I'm perfectly fine to say that I am kind of fat, and that's fine. That's perfectly fine. It's not bad. You know, that's, it's one of those things where you have to strip that connotation away, because it's mm -hmm. people who are prejudiced, who has made fat such a bad connotation. It's like, yeah, I struggle finding clothes of my size. I struggle going to the mall, worst thing ever. Trying to find swimsuits, worst thing ever. Mm -hmm. And that i mean you can't erase that experience no one can erase that experience um you know and i sorry yeah. i totally get what you're saying and i don't think it should be like a a negative word yeah i just believe that there's like other words to use. like personally i don't want to use that word it yeah. makes me feel kind of yucky just because i like when I was little, okay, I, I was never, like, even overweight or anything, but, like, mm -hmm. I was bullied for, because I don't know why, but they would yeah. call me, like, fat and ugly, and so, like, I just don't like using either of those yeah. words. And I just don't use them. It's one of those things where it's, like, uh, if you if you are in that minority, you can reclaim it. Mm -hmm. So, like, for me, because I am fat, I'm fine with using the word fat, but if anybody else, especially a super you know, skinny person were to call me that, I'd be like, where are you coming there from we with go. that word? Yes. Yeah, no, totally. So, Period. yeah, you're valid. We're going on a lot of tangents today. I know. It's okay. <laughs> a lot of thoughts. It's our it's our last episode, so we're like, yeah. we don't want to talk about there. everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I'm, so over summer, I'm planning on working. I'm so excited mm -hmm. to go back to work. Um, I'm getting a new job. I might get two. Not sure Ooh. yet. But yeah, I want to like serve. I want to be a waitress somewhere um, oh, or have some type of job like that. And um, I want to like maybe go on a road trip. I would love to go to the Grand Canyon. That's been like on my mind constantly lately, but it's like 20 hours away. Yeah. Um, so I might have to wait and like get a cheap plane ticket like over winter or something, you yeah. know, so... But I do want to, like, definitely at least go somewhere, even if it's, like, two hours away. Oh, totally. Um, right. uh, my family, we're planning on going to Chicago. Yeah. And I mainly want to do museums. I, I mean, I'm a museum person. <laughs> I'm literally majoring in it. But, like, the science museum, natural history, planetarium, yeah. it all. I'm, I went to Chicago last summer and it was pretty cool. It was just like, we walked around all day. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it was like exhausting, but it was fun, like seeing the city and like seeing everything it had to offer. I tried their pizza. They're like famous pizza. Didn't like it. Yeah. But that's just me. That's just me. You're valid. Um, and then, so after summer, I have two options. I'm going to either go to beauty school 
become a nail technician, Slide. and then become an esthetician. And then I want to, like, build myself up so, like, eventually I would want to get a salon. I would want to start a blog, like, about beauty. I would um, become, like, self-employed yeah. and, like, have my own type of thing. And then if I could get far in it, I would want to, like, start a business and, like, make my own products or, like, have people work for me, you know? Like, yeah. rent out in places in my salon. Um, but if I don't do that, then I want to go to... I'll probably go to community college for like journalism and I really want to go into the like some sort of English type of thing um or I want to go into like a like literary I guess so um or I want to go into like it it's not necessarily like politics I guess it's more like sociology and psychology but yeah. like gender equal inequality and like societal problems that yeah. we have like or um the environment like that's a huge one for me like I want to help the world in that type of type of way mm -hmm. um so yeah I'm not really sure yet but those are like the three things that I'm looking towards yeah. I just have to choose one <laughs> <laughs> and it's totally it's totally cool to have one plan and then either scrap it like we I mean we both said that we had plans that we had scrapped before yeah or if you, I mean, you basically have two years, either your whole community college experience or the first two years of your college or university, mm -hmm. where you're mostly doing your gen ed classes, where you have to take another math, another English, another history, mm -hmm. another science. Um, and so you have time to kind of dip your toes in different waters and figure out what you like and if you end up switching your major that's entirely fine most people do that like two to three times before they end up graduating yeah. so if I mean you have time yeah if I did go to school and I went like the journalism route I'd probably do like I'd probably major in literature or English and then I would minor in like art or something because I really like art and like that's kind of why I decided to go into beauty was because I wanted to incorporate that into my everyday work yeah um and like I feel like that's kind of like the same thing with like writing is it's definitely like a creative aspect that I get to create things in so that's definitely like the biggest thing for me that's important but I don't know I'm excited I, I might go to, like, school late. I might start a little late, work extra. I'm trying to save up so I can get an apartment, you know, so I can live with my little cat and get him a girlfriend. Ah. And just the three of us, you know, hang out and vibe a little bit, you yeah. know. It's, I mean, it's a struggle, especially just, like, we yeah. have a bit of a housing crisis in St. Yeah. Charles. I know. Yeah, so it's just, um, I mean, it's just crazy. I know. Right. It's... And apartments are crazy expensive. You might have to get a roommate. I know. I might. Um, Crestwood, that's where my beauty school would be. And their apartments aren't as expensive. They're actually pretty cheap. Yeah. Compared to St. Charles. But yeah. We'll just have to see about it. Like, I don't really know. What do you think that you're most excited about? I mean, I just don't know. I went to Truman for three weeks. Um... In 2018, before heading into freshman year, um, for it was one college course that you take, and I chose theater. <laughs> so um, I basically, I mean, we did a play and we did rehearsals and then sometimes notes and stuff. And so it felt like it felt like college, like downscaled. And of course, we didn't have complete freedom like we had to have a buddy system whenever we walked everywhere you know you had to choose like an afternoon activity all that stuff but I really liked that because I felt independent within the reins of something because mm -hmm. I don't I don't entirely want freedom of choice <laughs> that like freaks me out <laughs> like complete independence and complete like you're in charge of your own thing I'm like <clears throat> yeah that's terrifying you want predictability. You yeah. want to know, like, what your routine is going to be. Which is totally autism talking. But <laughs> that's also, I mean, that's just, like, coping with being in a different environment. Like, being comfortable still. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, And it was just a complete shock going back to normal life after 
uh, after the, the camp because you were, for the most part, uh, in charge of yourself, and then you suddenly have to go back into a a place where, you know, your parents are asking stuff from you, and you have to do the dishes, and you have to do this yeah. and that, and it was, like, such a culture shock again to be, like, what happened? Um, and I feel like that is going to be what I'm nervous about again is, like, going back from winter break and being, like, why why do I have a curfew? <laughs> or, I mean, yeah. like, why do I have, like, these rules or whatever? But, I mean, I'm also excited to have that that independence again. Mm-hmm. And to decorate my dorm room. Yeah. I have some really cute decorations. And I'm not even finished. I'm super <laughs> excited about it. Yeah, I'm most excited about living on my own, probably. And just, like, being independent. Like you said, like, just... Finally, like, being seen as an adult and someone that's, like, responsible and can make their own decisions and, like, do my own thing. Like, I've been waiting for this since high school started, Um, and I just feel like once I save up a little bit of money, like, I'm I'm hitting the road and I'm never coming back. Mm -hmm. Like, not, I'm not saying, like, to my family, I'm saying, like, living, like, in a dependent state. Like, I want to make it the extra mile, yeah. you know, I, I want to be successful. I, you know, I have goals, I have aspirations in life. And I feel like now I'm finally getting the chance to actually go towards them, like actually work towards them and not just like be in school. Yeah. I, I totally feel that. And I feel like that's an argument a lot of people make whenever I say that I am scared to drive or whatever, they're like, oh, but you have the freedom to go anywhere you want. And the thing is, is that I don't, I don't count that as freedom. I know most people do, but for me, freedom would be being able to buy what I want, having the money to get, because there was so many times where I had to pick and choose what I want in life or like, um, I would get like five minutes in a gift shop if we're like at Grant's Farm at something to Mm -hmm. pick something out and that was just not enough time and then I would leave empty handed and like I just want to be successful to the point where I can see something that's cute or something that I want and then I can just buy it Yeah. and I don't have to think twice or I don't have to I mean entirely think about the end goal but I mean, it's such a double-edged sword because, yeah, you're an adult, but now you have to call your insurance company yeah, because, uh, like, you know, something came up or, you know, you have to say goodbye to your pediatrician that you've seen for, like, 12 years. It's yeah, ridiculous. I, I agree with you, but at the same time, I think that, at least for me, like, I... Sometimes I'll come home at like literally at nine o'clock because I had school and then I had, you know, soccer and then you don't get off the bus until like nine Mm -hmm. and then like whatever. So you just have long days. And when you come home from long days and your room is messy because you don't have enough space of like all your own stuff or like yesterday I came came home from practice and my cat had thrown up on my bed and like (laughs) it's just because like I don't have enough room to do anything, you know, like, or it'd be fine if, like, and then I, like, had to leave right away. Yeah. Um, after dealing with that because, like, I was going over to my boyfriend's house, but, like, if I just had my own space, I feel like I wouldn't be go, go, go all the time. Like, I wouldn't be, (sighs) I would put more into what I have because yeah. it would all be mine. Like I wouldn't be cleaning up other people's messes. Oh, totally. And that's just because like I have little siblings. Like I just have little tiny children running around. And so it's like really hard to like be like, oh, keep this tidy and neat and this and this, you know, it's just not possible. Yeah. And that's fine. But I'm excited I'm ready to have that. Yeah. You I'm know? excited for, to decorate all of the spaces i'm gonna Mm -hmm. have such a cute kitchen cute living room cute all this all that am i probably gonna be able to afford a house no right but like what i'll just make an apartment complex look really cute or get what's the name of it a condo yeah yeah um but i mean like work yeah i'm excited for it 
what do you think would be the best ways to prepare others for their senior years? Um, 100% it's you're going to have a, a senior Google Classroom and you hear on the announcements all the time, seniors check your Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. That is going to be a major thing when it comes to scholarships because there's tons of scholarships that you can do. Ms. Stewart has a lot of them and a lot of them will be announced throughout the year. So you want to keep updated with that. Um, and you also want to have a bit of pocket money or be able to ask your parent or guardian for money because senior year drains your wallet. Uh, you have like your senior field trip, project graduation. Um, cap and gown. Yeah, cap and gown. Senior picture clothes, if you do that. Yeah, senior pictures, a lot just of it, taking them. Yeah, a lot of it isn't like necessarily needs, but it definitely- It's tradition. Yeah, it is your senior year. I mean, you want to make the most out of it. I know at least I wanted to. I mean, I suffered <laughs> for three years, so I was like, I'm going to do the best I can this year and make it actually worth it, you totally. know? So definitely like doing, making- room for expenses like that or even like going out with friends doing a senior trip like going somewhere over Christmas break things like that it's all very important to like know what you want to do in that aspect yeah and also making sure you I mean because by this point you know which classes you don't like what courses mm -hmm. you do like what teachers you you know click with ones that you don't uh which ones you're willing to do hard classes in and which ones that you never want to touch again. Mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, you need to make sure that your schedule reflects that. Otherwise, you, you know, you will basically suffer. Yeah. Uh, like, mentally, physically, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I felt like senior year was the first year that I got to pick all of my classes and like thoroughly enjoy them. And so definitely take that um, and run with it. Like take that advantage that you have because like I struggled a lot the first three years. And then this year I got all A's besides one B my first semester and then all A's this semester. So, totally. and it's because I enjoyed my classes. I wanted to do my work. I didn't find it hard. I found it enjoyable and interesting. Um, so yeah, definitely. Oh, and the B was in an AP class, so yeah. I don't even count that. But definitely take classes that you want to take. I understand taking like college algebra or even like calculus if you need to, that math credit, whatever. But if you are not looking forward to that, then I would definitely maybe take one AP class, two, if you're really trying to get there mm -hmm. and then have fun with it. Like Dual that's credit. All. Yes. My, my advice is take dual credit and don't take AP classes. Yeah. Um, because dual credit, you are going to get the credit no matter what, as long as you literally pass with the C. Um, college comp taught by Riker, fantastic class. It will have you do seven page research papers <laughs> and a bunch of stuff. But I mean, this class has pushed me to be a better writer and like that I've never seen before, mm -hmm. that I didn't even know that I had the capability of writing stuff like that. Um, and, you know, do a uh, Kush, you know, College US History, uh, those sorts of classes will be your saving grace because you will get that credit as long as you put in the effort. Yeah, totally. And, but if those aren't your, I mean, if you're more of a STEM kid than you are an arts kid, that's fine. I mean, there's, you know, you have like calculus and stuff or college comp, which is also a dual credit class. Um, I mean, there's just so many options. It's about knowing yourself and looking for them. For sure. Um, another thing I would say is my sophomore year, I doubled up on math. So I took um, geometry and algebra two. I got 100% in algebra one. And so like I was pretty good at algebra mm -hmm. and geometry came pretty easy. I've always been like, okay at math. The only thing that kind of messed me up was that it was the year that COVID and everything got shut down. So yeah. um, that definitely made it harder, but I still passed the class through that. So that just shows you that 
I don't even know. It was just insane. You but, have the capability of doing it no matter the circumstances. Exactly. And, and also um, people will give you space. Yes. And I think that math is one of those things. Some people get it. Some people don't at all. But if it is something that you understand, doubling up is a great opportunity because then I had all three credits that I needed. And the next year I took integrated math. And if you were smarter than that or you wanted to challenge yourself, you could take college algebra you're, as a junior or like pre-calc as a junior or, you know, all of these different things. So then you don't have to double up with pre-calc your third year. Yeah. When you're taking that hard of a class, you can just get both of the easier ones out of the way. Mm-hmm. And then like you want, you could have that as an open space for any other class. Yeah. You to take. It's also really important to um, make sure you are actually looking at colleges that you want to go to and what their requirements are. Um, because some more prestigious schools are going to want you to have four years in all core subjects. Um, so you definitely don't want to like skip out on a math class or senior year or something and then only to realize that the college that you were striving to go for won't take you because you didn't take that class. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's important to start searching now, uh, for colleges if you're a junior, because, you know, you want to, you're going to have to do a college essay, which college comp, if you do take it, that's the first assignment that you do over the summer. And then she helps polish it up. And that's how I got into Truman is that I use that essay that I did the first week of school. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you just want to look at the requirements and see if they have the majors that you would like, or the social life or this or that, Mm -hmm. but it's, And it's okay to not go out of state. I literally wrote a whole song about my feelings on that because I wanted to go to Colorado. I wanted to go to California. But sometimes that's just not possible. And those who can go out of state need to realize how, I mean, how special their circumstances are. Because, I mean, not a lot of kids here, I believe, can deal with that. And if you end up being one of those kids, it's okay. And it doesn't mean that you can't have a great experience in a school in Missouri, you know? And there's always, I mean, you can always transfer or work your butt off to find a, uh, get the money to yeah. go to a place out of state. I have another thing that I want to bring up, and that's like with AT- ATCs, ACTs and SATs. Um, So I only took the ACT once and I wish that I would have taken it one more time because I had no idea what to expect the first time. So I was already kind of nervous. It goes really, really fast. Mm -hmm. And so that's like what made me kind of struggle. I feel like I honestly could have gotten a way better score on it if I would have taken it again. And then I was just too lazy to do it. So Um, don't be like me and definitely make sure that you have time to take it again. And then also maybe looking into also taking the SAT. Um, I know a lot of people think that that one's not like as important, but I've heard that, um, usually you'll do better in one or the other. And so having two to look at and compare and maybe go with the better one is definitely going to put you on a higher pedestal and like give you a better, um, opportunity, I guess, especially for other schools. Um, and definitely look into as many scholarships as you can get and find out as soon as possible what you want to do. Like I knew that not trying to put any pressure, but I knew that I wasn't going to go to a regular college. And if I did go to college, it would be a community college. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, for example, you would work really hard to get that A plus because that would be a really, really beneficial thing for you to do. Um, which they changed it where if you are exempt and you don't go to school, it doesn't go against it. And they're changing it in the past too. Mm -hmm. So that's really awesome. Um, for those that can have that and grab that opportunity, but that would, that's definitely a big one. I would say it's just like trying to get all of the horrible things out of the way so that you can like thoroughly enjoy your classes and enjoy your teachers and your friends and all those activities and clubs that we were talking about earlier. And it's okay if you are 
not good at the ACT. I took yeah. mine in eighth grade and I got a 23, which is pretty cool. That's but what really good. I, I, I took one or I took it again as a junior coming into senior year and I got a 24, you know? Yeah. So, and I'm just, standardized testing is the bane of my existence. And yeah. it's okay if that that's you too, because I mean, I still have, still got scholarships through my school yeah. because of my, my admissions essay, because of all the volunteer work that I did, because I joined these clubs and I had those achievements from nationals and stuff. Um, you know, not all schools are looking for you to be an actual person. Yeah. Not just test scores. So you need to figure out how to balance that. I think that's good advice. Like not just, it's not all about academics. Sometimes it's also about everything else that you can do. Um, the last thing that we're going to talk about is probably, I mean, I'm going to be emotional <laughs> talking about it is going to be, what are you going to miss in high school? So do you want to go first? Um, sure. I, I kind of hated high school um for most of it if not all of it besides this year Mm -hmm. um but I will miss like definitely the sports and like getting out and playing and doing all of that I mean it's like gonna be a way bigger like change for me it's it's I'm just like not gonna have anything to do I feel like and um Honestly, I'm going to miss the teachers a lot um, because I felt like they were there for me almost more than a lot of my friends were. And they definitely made like a huge impact on me and who I've become. And obviously, I mean, they gave me my education without them. I would not be here today. And so like, I'm really grateful for that. And just like the people, I feel like I'm not too worried about, hopefully, because I'll see them. But if not, I would definitely miss the couple friendships that I have, like, made through this year. Um, And I just wish that it was easier and that it was something that would be, like, an easy transition and not hard to, like, I guess, manage time with seeing them still. But with all this being said, like, I am looking forward to what the future holds and like the things that I will gain instead of lose. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's more to gain than lose. I am going to miss sports and friends and coaches and teachers and just everything, like everything about the building, honestly, like my classes, I really enjoyed this year. Um, yeah, just kind of the whole thing from this year. I'm definitely going to miss. Yeah. Totally with teachers, like, I have already told, like, the couple teachers that I'm super close with, like, this year, it's like, I'm getting your number and I'm following you on Facebook, mm-hmm. like, as soon as I graduate. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, me and Ramsey, I'm like, you're gonna play D&D with me. That's just, like, <laughs> what's gonna happen. Like, we're gonna be besties for life and you're just gonna have to deal with it because, like, I don't know. It's just, I'm finally like able to I don't know I just like I want to be able to text them and be like hey look what I got I got another scholarship or here's what I'm doing in college you know you reminded me uh of this or this one thing or your lesson I'm being taught again in college and I already know most of the stuff and just all that all that kind of shindig but the biggest thing that I'm going to miss is just my friendships. I have a lot of underclassmen friends and a lot of underclassmen that I've like took under my wing, um, especially this year through theater and through just like meeting them. And I, I mean, I, half of my friend group is juniors. Like I look at the, you know, a group chat that we all have and I'm like the majority of these are juniors and I'm like I'm not going to be able to see their senior year besides maybe going to the plays and like I so wish to participate and see what it's going to be like and I have an eighth grader coming in 
that I met through Sam's who I'm never going to see their journey either, their entire journey. And I was just like, if you have any questions, I will tell them all. I will tell which classes are good, which classes are bad, how to walk through the halls, anything. Like, cause I mean, the high school experience sucks for a lot of it, but also it's the only one that you have. And yeah. it's, it's special to go through this. Yeah, You know, it's what all the movies we watched growing up were about. And, you know, I really feel like I have a concrete group of friends that I absolutely adore and that I would spend the rest of my life with if I could, but that's just not going to happen. And that has been the worst realization and the worst thing that I have to cope with is just leaving them and only that they have to see me through a screen through Snapchat. Yeah. And I'm like, literally tell me everything. Like if I will be your personal diary, your personal <laughs> therapist, cause I just want to know. Yeah. I'm nosy. Like, let me know about your life. Just, I, yeah. I feel like last year, um, so I was really close with all the seniors from last year or like a, a handful of them. And I feel like I lost more people last year than I'm going to lose this year. And so that helps me with like moving on, I guess. Um, doesn't mean that it doesn't still suck, but mm -hmm. I definitely did like all the people that I talked to last year, like they're, they're already gone. So that definitely helped me. And I guess I just never really reached out to anyone else to form any friendships. It was definitely kind of me on my own. And then like, I'd hang out with my boyfriend or like other schools. I used to do that all the time. But yeah, I guess I've never been like a, a person that had a lot of friends. And so, I mean, I have a lot of friends, um, but not like close, close. Like I, yeah. it wasn't like all that I was about. Like I definitely was on my own more than with others. Which is so weird because you think we would, it would be, we would have opposite experiences mm -hmm. or you would be the ones with a lot of friends and I'd be one with, you know, only a little. But I guess, I mean, that's the number one reason why a lot of people stick with theater, even if they don't really like the direction that it's going or they just, you know, it's not their thing anymore. You stick with it because of the friends. Yeah. And spending all those hours and you go to cast parties and then you end up hanging out and then you end up going to like ginghams with each other. Like yeah. you, I mean, you're almost forced to have a close bond with them. Yeah. And you know, that's where the majority of my friends come from. And that's, and that's why it hurt, hurts so much, but you know, and it's okay to, to have a different, you know, amount of friends, as yeah. long as you do have those connections. Isolation could possibly be one of the worst things you can do to yourself, mm -hmm. mentally and physically and emotionally. Um, but, you know, you don't have to be a social butterfly. I mean, I'm certainly not. My battery drains, like, every two seconds around people. <laughs> yeah. But that doesn't mean that I wouldn't go out of my way to hang out with the people that care for me and that I care for. Yeah. Um... I, I really am going to miss the teachers. I think that's definitely going to be one of the biggest things I miss, which is funny because everyone's like, oh, I hate teachers. But I, a lot of times, like my teachers and my coaches, like I see them more than my family, you know, as a busy person. I, I see them more than my mom sometimes. And like my mom is my number one. And my dad's not in my life. Like they're, some of the teachers in my life like are my role models they're the people that i look up to um and see as trusted adults that i can lean on and mm -hmm. so that's definitely going to be a, a different um aspect of you know kind of not having that anymore i feel like our teachers are really good people and um i used to not really think that but the more i i look into it They've, they've always been there for me, which is not something that people can tread on lightly. Like their jobs are hard. Like they are literally 
impacting the world as it is growing Mm -hmm. every single day. And at our school, at least, I, in my opinion, feel like they prepared me in the best way possible. Every single teacher that I've ever had, they all taught me something that was memorable and something that I can take with me to Mm -hmm. the end of it. Yeah. And also our, I mean, our guidance counselor, counselors, the guidance office is, I mean, that's some of the best guidance counselors like ever. Like I know so many people and especially coming from, you know, like middle school, a lot of middle school counselors just don't get it. But do you know who does? Skaturo, Bickle. Bosler, Mm -hmm. um, literally all of them have been so great and not only could you like vent to them, but they will genuinely try their best to make sure change happens. Yeah. I was going to say, um, last year, Bickle was the reason why I got through it. Like he helped me more than I could even think of. Like I didn't think that he could help me that much. And he did because he wanted to see me succeed. Mm -hmm. And that was like just the end of it. Like there wasn't any like buts or ifs or um, me benefiting him. Like that's his job and he knows that and he wants to see me do good. And so like when he helped me with my schedule or helped me with like my teachers and getting work done and, you know, just having someone to talk to. I I went into his office a handful of times probably and just sobbed to him for like an hour. Mm -hmm. And he sat there and listened. And that is something that not many people can do. Mm -hmm. Like I was a wreck and he, he literally just like was there for me. It was, I remember after that, like I felt embarrassed because I had just like literally poured my whole heart and soul out to him, but it wasn't even like he didn't make me feel embarrassed. Oh, cool. Pardon the interruption. Will all students that are attending the Spanish field trip with Senor Lopez Reese please report to the main comments? Thank you. But I I think that he is an amazing person, and yeah. I can't imagine all the other counselors because I know that they're the same. I know that they all work together and do their best. And when you have a good group of teachers and staff members and everyone in the building that care about you and want the best for the building to keep running, mm-hmm. it's it really is something to be grateful for. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for Bosler to come back after she had her kid Mm -hmm. and I'm she's supposed to come back uh the last couple days of finals and I'm very excited for that because she missed out on my whole senior year and I mean me and her have been 100% like through the trenches together she helped so much with being trans and making sure like teachers knew what's up when it comes to like which names you say during attendance and making sure all that is Mm -hmm. safe and I mean, oh, I have just... The respect they have for us is... Oh, totally. Amazing. Phenomenal. It's like, I call her my school mom. Yeah. And I call Mulich my school aunt. And 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 they're like, and they're like, I get it. And you're totally right. And so they'll be like, I'm I'm just your aunt. And I'm like, yeah, you are. (laughs) Like, it's like having a school family, you... I mean, you wouldn't think that it would happen, but it does. Mm -hmm. And you just have to, I mean, not everything's a concrete box. Just, like, not every family is, like, a nuclear family, you know? Yeah. And you you just have to find that place that fits. And the moment that it does, I mean, there's such a relief and such compassion that just flows through everybody. And it's, I mean, it's just a magical feeling. Yeah. I... I'm very grateful for all of the things that I've been given throughout high school. Mm-hmm. Um, and with that, I did have like a lot of downfalls or, you know, burdens that definitely kept me struggling. But all in all, like there's nothing that I really regret. There's nothing that I feel like was left unfinished. I feel like. <sighs> You're just ready. Yeah. I've been ready, (laughs) but 
I, I, if you told me, if you asked me like what my favorite teacher was, I couldn't pick. Honestly, I love all of my teachers for so many different reasons. And I really think that they are people that just don't get enough recognition mm-hmm. because they are truly like, I don't even know. Like the impact that they've had on me is more than I can even express, mm-hmm. you know? And it's, it's something that I can't even comprehend how to thank them yeah, or how to hold on to it and not like have to let go of them and still hold on to what I have. Yeah. And I feel like it's also important to just mention our gratitude for the podcast. Yeah. I mean, this has been such an amazing experience to do with you and to do with Hippie and learn how to edit, learn how to film, be able Mm -hmm. to have these mature conversations, being like doing the announcements and say, Hey, there's a new episode and have Mm -hmm. people come up to me later and be like, you know, I'm so glad that you're having these conversations. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just a fantastic experience and I'm so glad that we were able to do it together. And I'm, I'm sad that we only got one year of it and we only got six episodes of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I wish we could continue it. I just don't know if that's going to be possible. And honestly, that's okay. Yeah. You know? I definitely wish that we could have um, gotten more out there, but I am happy that we started it. I remember when I told you about it, and I was like, Dean, like, I, want, I want to do this. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't even know if we would be able to. And I was, like, super doubtful yeah. about it. I was really doubtful. And then all of a sudden, like, next class, you're like, all right, let's do this. Let's do this. Like, I can talk to her. I can talk to them. I can whatever. And then I was like, oh, my God, it's going to happen. Yeah. Like, it was insane. Like, you just made that dream come true. Yeah. And it. I'm just, like, really happy that we did it. Mm-hmm. And... I felt like I had a voice. I felt like you had a voice. I felt like we respected everyone and everything. Um, and it was just like a good a good way to just like kind of vent almost yeah. and just like talk about things and like struggles that we all face every single day. Yeah. And I'm very grateful for this experience because it definitely like made you one of my friends. And um, I definitely wouldn't be close with you without it and not because I didn't like you or anything yeah. it's just because like we you never said had we, path that crossed. Yeah, we, we didn't and um so yeah I'm very grateful for this podcast and I'm very grateful for newspaper oh, I, totally. was, I wish I could have done another year of that class because I loved it yeah um I and I just want to thank hippie for letting this happen and mr lawrence who lets us use the room Mm -hmm. to record um and i I mean i want to thank hippie because at some point i just really couldn't write articles on my life it just i wasn't interested in you know interviewing and writing things about the school i wanted to do something more in depth and at some point she just it's not giving up, but she knew that I was so incredibly passionate about this podcast and that I was willing to work like hours to like an hour to two hours just editing this. Mm-hmm. Um, and like as repetitive as it gets, this is what I love. I love like hearing us back preach into the choir and being able to get that feedback from other students. Like yeah. this is such this is such an amazing opportunity. And, I mean, maybe this is never going to happen again. This is a -a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And, like, thank you guys so much for being a part of it. Yeah. Yeah, you're amazing for editing all of this. I remember I (laughs) edited it once, and I probably got through, like, 12 minutes of film in one one class period. And it's, like... Oh my gosh, when you when you put it into that perspective, it is so tedious and it is so time consuming. Um, and you really, I feel like you really brought this to life. Yeah. It, I mean, it just gets easier with time. And Lord knows, if we actually had visuals with this, it would probably be way more complicated. But um, 
even just the fact that we're not on Spotify. You can't turn off your phone when you listen to this. But we have, like, I think I checked it. Our first episode has, like, 55 views or something. <laughs> and, like, you know. Better than nothing. No, I mean, like, yeah. Like, who cares about having, like, millions of views? The fact that 55 people, like, yeah. listen to this is, I mean, that's good enough for me. You know? Yeah. It's, a it's cool still podcast. making an impact. Like, oh, it's totally. Still, yeah, it's still... Not yeah. tons, but I like mean, tens and tens and tens and tens yeah, and tens of people. And that's like what? There's like 800 kids in the school? 55? One sixteenth? Yeah. That's one sixteenth of the school who have listened to it. And that's... I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. Thank you so much for tuning into the Crow's Nest. We hope you have a unforgettable summer. And as always... Go, go get them, Pirate.